Greetings travellers and welcome to another edition of Tweed's Trail. I have just started the walk, uh, got up at 6 o'clock this morning with a nasty cold and uh, got the train up to Fort William and just arrived at half past 12. So I got myself a McDonald's, having a wee uh, whiskey and coke to keep myself going and uh, I'm going to head along the way. Now, today I was hoping to get to Clooney, but I think it might be a wee bit too late. There's a wee campsite just past it. Um, you know, but uh, it's about 20k, I think. And because it's quite late now, I might not have time because I really want to be in Fort Augustus by tomorrow night because they've got a pub. Otherwise, I would pass it quite early in the morning the next day, so we'll need to see. So I'm going to follow this wee canal all the way up to Neptune's staircase, and then there I should find a wee loch called Loch Lochy, which uh, will be grand. Ciao for now. Looks like it's going to be a wet day, which could hamper my efforts to get to Clooney. We'll see. Let's we'll walk all the way around there. wrapped up and waterproof. Now we're on the Caledonian Canal, and here is the Lord of the Glens. Coming right through the now. It's a big beast. Right. She a beauty. Bid thee well, Lord of the Glens. Bid thee well. And all who travel in you. Well, here I am at Neptune's staircase. This is where Neptune himself got his water wings and uh, got a canal boat. This is a series of locks for the canal boats to either enter or exit the Caledonian Canal, which from Fort William will take you all the way up to the North Sea via Loch Lochy, Loch Ness and up to Inverness which is the way that I'm going so as you can see you can actually do this route by boat as well should you prefer over and out now the Caledonian Canal next to the Union Canal is one of the busiest in Scotland and as you can see there's a wee boat coming now, ancient boating law dictates that you need to get a wee wave for the boatsmen. So let's see if they'll do that for me. We're gonna wave, wave. He did it. You can see it's the law. Just around the river bend. Just around the river bend. Tweed's trail. Soaked already. 
It has uh, been pissing it down for the last hour and I've been walking along a really crappy wee canal road for the last four which isn't doing my feet any favours but uh, getting there the rain looks like it's waning although there's still quite a few rainy clouds in the distance oh, there's even more I don't think it's really going to stop for the rest of the night but I'm going to be venturing into these wee hills into that forest I just got a tip off from one of the guys that works at the locks that there's a secret wee campsite around there beside Clooney and uh, it's for key holders only uh, but he said that I should be able to sneak in and uh, borrow a lock from somebody and they can get me access to the showers but I'll see how I get on, I might just slum it and keep on going and get to that dodgy wee bit of grass that's meant to be a campsite uh, up in yonder hills um, still got about two hours to go it is five o'clock maybe three hours actually so I'm going to have a, a light refreshment uh, an energy bar and a fag uh, but hey ho here I go Tweet's Trail now this is Loch Lochy great name for a loch and it is very lucky if I don't say so myself now uh, I've been walking along this wee path and we're going to go into that there forest and then down there and I think I'll try and camp down at that wee bit there if I've got enough energy I'll keep on going towards the official campsite but it's quite far away so uh, we'll see how I get on but uh, I, I've already done a fair bit today so I don't want to push it on my first day but we'll see Arrivederci Now here is what remains of a World War II practice uh, landing craft which was used by the commandos so they could practice their assaults on beaches and that and uh, it's still here because uh, the commandos in World War One and World War Two used to come to Loch Lochy and uh, this is where they do their training a wee bit of history for you Good morning from Tweed's Trail uh, Day number two I just woke up a wee minute ago last night I set up camp at about half past nine, ten o'clock um, outside uh, Clunes um, and it was that wet and full of midges that I just decided to set it up and I was that tired that I just fell asleep I didn't even uh, have any dinner I was knackered so um, at the moment I'm just having a wee cup of coffee I'm just letting that boil the now and uh, I'm going to have some nuts and tuna um, and maybe a chocolate bar and that'll keep me going until I progress so the route for today hopefully I'm gonna to get to Fort Augustus um, there's two places that I could either be where I think I am is here at the glass blah maybe uh, sounds a bit French doesn't it could be there um, there's an abandoned house beside me, I'm sleeping beside a, a scary wee house uh, or I could be here um, uh, uh, here and that might actually be a graveyard I don't know, but hopefully it's that in because then I've not got that far to go to Lagan uh, which is just there and then all the way up to Fort William, so to Fort Augustus so I think it's maybe, I don't know, 12, 16 miles um, to Fort Augustus uh, I don't know, well yesterday I clocked about 20 so it was a good, uh, it was a good walk but as you can probably hear it's still pissing it down with rain and it's going to be pissing it down for the next wee while so everything's still wet uh, it wasn't the most comfortable sleep last night 
and I got woken up at one in the morning by a weird light. Everything around me was really bright. Um, like there's lights going off. I looked outside and there's nothing there, and the lights had gone. Very strange. Maybe it's that creepy wee house. Who knows? Anyway, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, and uh, because it's pissing it down, there might not be that much in the way of recording today. But hey ho! Well, it's time to say goodbye to Loch Lochy. I have to say I'm not going to miss it, or the West Highland Ferocious Midge. I'd imagine I'll be seeing a lot of them. Uh, so I'm just going to go down here, and then past that, there will be Loch Oik, which is a lot smaller, it's only five miles along. So that'll take me all the way up there through a canal, and up to Fort Augustus where there's pub. Oh, hello there. Well, I'm just about to enter lagging, and uh, despite the late start yesterday, I'm not actually lagging behind. Ho <laughs> um, I'm right en route, because uh, I covered about 20 odd miles, so I'm uh, making my way. But as we enter, may as well tell you a wee story about lagging. Now, if you recall a previous Tweed trail, I told you about the Fraser clan and how the Tweedies, my clan, are a set of the Fraser clan. Now these hills were once uh, home, and probably still are home to a few, uh, Camerons. And uh, the Camerons had invited uh, one of the Frasers over for dinner one night. And uh, they had, I think, six oxes they killed, six oxen. Uh, for a wee banquet, but the clan chief of the Cameron said six hens would have done well, and uh, as opposed to the to the oxes, and that apparently warrants an insult. So this wee uh, Fraser dude went back home. Uh, he wasn't chuffed with the reception that he got, and uh, they dubbed the the Cameron who done it uh, six hen Cameron. That was his name. But that actually started off a war between the Camerons and the Frasers. And they had a battle just down here. Sorry, camera cut out. They had a battle just down here. And it's known as the Battle of the Shirts. And uh, it's known as the Battle of the Shirts because it was a really, really warm day. And uh, their shirts, their overcoats were a wee bit too warm to fight in. So uh, they took their overcoats on off and put in their shirts instead. Uh, now it was 800 Camerons versus just 300 Frasers. And there was probably a few Tweedies thrown into the mix as well since we were part of their set. They might have made their way up here for this wee battle. Now despite being outnumbered by over 2 to 1, the Frasers fought hard, and uh, at the end of the day it was neither a victory, nor it was uh, a defeat. The last people standing were four Frasers and eight Camerons. Sorry, camera cut out again. It's maybe a wee bit damp, hopefully you're not broken. But what I was going to say was, get it right up here you wee Malenki Cameron Bampots. We won the Battle of the Shirts. Alright, I'm currently here. And there's two ways to go about this bit. It's the high road up to Invergarry, or the low road, which skips right through to the Bridge of Oik. And now, because of the weather, I've decided to take the low road. I was going to take the high road, but it's pish. So, uh, I'm just going to proceed all the way through Loch Oik and uh, up to Fort Augustus. Ho ho! This is the end of uh, Loch Oik and uh, down there where it starts another section of the Caledonian Canal which will go all the way up to Fort Augustus uh, about four miles I think and that's where I'll be spending the night got pubs get. Well, back on the canal, 
Here come some more wankers off the water. Let's see if the boat wankers will wave at me. Come wave at the peasant walking on his feet. He's a wave. even a bloody wave. You think they would be aware of the code of the boaters? You meant to bloody wave. Probably Brexit boaters. No boaters. I bet. They're them. Now up ahead of me there are two people which you can't really see. Yeah. I've not actually met anyone along the way. It's just been me, there's been a couple of folk passing by going towards Fort William, but I've not actually bumped any, into anyone going on the same path as me, which is exciting. But I think this is probably the one thing that is different from the West Highland Way, apart from the crappy terrain, because I'm just walking on roads and it's actually quite sore. But, uh, we're definitely lacking the camaraderie of the, the old team in the West Highland Way. It's certainly not as busy as the West Highland Way, but there's not as many pubs, which is probably why. But uh, it's always good to have a couple of folk that you can just dig in yawn every now and again when you pass them or when you pass when they pass you. But hey ho, onwards and upwards. Only had one and a half miles to go to Port Augustus. I got picked up on a boat by these guys. <laughs> so uh, here I am cruising it. Became one of the boat wankers. There you go. So I'm going to try and find uh, maybe a hostel tonight and get my stuff dry and uh, see how that goes. Adios. Well, that's me arrived in Fort Augustus after uh, hitching a, a lift in a boat which uh, I never asked the guy but he just said that he'd give me a lift um, so I took it but uh, here I am and I've had a wee pint chatted to a couple of Canadian guys who are here for golf and now I'm going down to find the hostel and because everything's wet I might see if I can maybe just sleep in an actual bed tonight. If they've got a dry room then I'll do that. Uh, if they don't have a dry room I'll just camp and I'll go back to the pub later on. Hey ho! Got my camp for the night. All set up. But it's uh, still pissing it down. It's going to be like this for another two days. Uh, so, I don't know, I might call it a day. Get the bus back home tomorrow. Uh, I think I might be defeated here. The, go the going's been really tough because I've been walking on concrete for the last two days along canal paths and little bits of forest, but it's, uh, it's taken its toll on my feet because I've had an ankle fusion and I'm overcompensating on my other foot. But these are all excuses, I'm basically, I think I'm done. Uh, my feet feel like they're on fire, but I've had a wash. And I'm in civilization at Fort Augustus. So uh, I might go and get a steak pie. There's a wee fish shop here, I might get some fish and chips. And uh, have a few pints. But I honestly think I'm done. Uh, Two more days of this. I've done it all before in the West Island Way. I just don't think I can stomach it. 
can see. The tweed trail. Well, I wasn't sure that I could do it. And I still don't think that I can. But I'm back in my tent. I've been to the pub. I watched uh, Poland versus uh, Portugal. A wee bit steamy on the lens there. And I uh, met some nice folk, some some people from uh, Norway and Holland and some Scots who told me not to give up. And uh, these guys are all people that are on their boat. Um, they've all got boats and they're all boating their way up to Loch Ness, which is only four hours for them. But for me, it's two days, two days of walk, so... I'd asked if I could have a lift and they said uh, they'd need to talk to their skipper. One of the guys just said no. He was a bit of a tube, but the other dude, he wanted me on the boat. But the skipper was in bed because he's been all sensible. So, I've got a couple options. Tomorrow morning, wake up bright and breezy. And uh, I can hitchhike my way up to Loch Ness on a boat. Which sounds pretty cool, because there's loads of locks, there's going to be loads of people stopping. Um, or just walk it. Um, it took about, I don't know, three hours maybe, sitting in the pub for the pins and needles in my feet to go away. Um, because I've been walking on really hard ground. I've been walking on Canal Road for the last two days straight for about 12 hours a day. Walking on concrete and gravel which is why it's been so tough um, it's not been nice walking on that surface and that's why I'm f that's why my legs are done why my feet are done why because I've been walking on really hard surface it'd be a lot easier if I had somebody to come and pick up my bags and take it to the next destination which is what most people do but not me because I like to camp um, so yes here I am in my tent, pondering what to do tomorrow, so I'll set my alarm and uh, I'll try and wake up early and see if I can hitchhike because most of the boats are leaving at about 7 o'clock in the morning and uh, I'll see what happens tomorrow. If I can hitchhike and the weather's looking nice then I'll just start walking, otherwise I'm getting a bus home because I'm done. It's actually annihilated me. That Pardon my French, that canal has uh, completely done me in. But it's been nice having a wee drink, and uh, Port Augustus, you're a nice wee place. I am not walking another day in this. I'm done, it's over. Been defeated by the great Glenway. Beautiful. May chance I'm doing that. Returned home to my warm fireplace and a wee nip of whiskey, and uh, I'm reading a bit of the Bruins. Well, it's been a, a very difficult two days, uh, hampered by the concrete paths of the canal, which isn't good when you're wearing uh, big heavy boots like I've got to wear due to my ankle fusion. I've got a big nice bruise where my fusion was, and uh, I've still got a bit of the man flu. Now that was, uh, it was a very difficult decision to throw in the tunnel like that, um, but I'd had enough. I've done harder walks, West Highland Way particularly, but um, that was just brutality. Uh, there's no way that I could have continued with my feet in that condition and with the cold. Uh, I could have given myself pneumonia by sleeping in a wet tent with a wet bag. Um, it just wasn't on, it wasn't happening. But I'll 
retired. Uh, I've got a bit of time off in August, I think. And uh, I'll do the Fort Augustus to, to Inverness route, which should only take about two days. I could do it in uh, three if I want to. But uh, we'll see. Um, lessons learned. Don't go walking with a flu. Um, maybe do a baggage transfer if you're going to be walking on a concrete path for two days. Uh, maybe pace it. I've done quite a lot of miles in those two days. I could have spread out over three, but I really wanted to go to the pub. But um, I did learn a lot from uh, the West Highland Way, getting the straps right on your backpack, uh, getting the tension right so that's not hurt, and making sure you sort out any niggles with your feet beforehand. But uh, that was brutal. I'm glad to be home though. And uh, like I said, I'll continue it another day. Until then. Woo! <laughs>